This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a challenge lock pinned up by Jess Hall and put into a Lagarde padlock. Now, if you've heard the name Lagarde before, it's probably in reference to safe locks. They're very well known for the safe locks they produce. However, to my knowledge, this is the only padlock they have ever made. They came without cores and were designed to accept most standard key and knob cylinders. It just so happens that I have a very similar lock, or I think the exact same one, that I've put a Medico core into. Now something interesting about the internal design of these locks, there is a spring right up in the top here that presses down on the core. What I believe that spring does is allow this lock to accept key and knob cylinders of slightly different lengths. But as a practical matter for picking, particularly of a challenge lock, it puts drag on the core. It makes it a little bit tougher to turn, I guess, for lack of a better term. And it certainly makes any challenge lock that you put inside of it a little bit more difficult. So we're going to see what it takes to get into this lock. It has Looks like pretty good bidding, some tall ones in the back, a little, a little low one in the middle there. Okay, let's see what it takes to get into this guy. We have a Schlage SC keyway that we're gonna use top of the keyway tension on with a 50 thousandths pry bar, and I'm gonna use a standard hook in 25 thousandths. Okay, number one, got a little click there, two, Got a click out of him, another click, nothing else out of him, three, click, nothing else for now, couple clicks out of four, nothing on five, and six is loose, back to one, click there, nothing on two, three, four is loose, five, nothing there, or Six is loose as well. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, five maybe is binding a bit. Nope, nothing. Okay, six. Definitely getting a little feedback on him, and I got a little bit more movement out of the core. Back to one, two, three, four. Okay, five is where the action is now. Got a click out of him. And another one. Nothing on six. Back to one, two. Okay, feedback on three. Got a lot of movement on the core on that one. Four. Got a click there. Five. that's everything out of five and six back to one two three four up oh, five maybe I didn't get enough out of him okay heard some things drop but got a lot of movement out of five and getting movement out of six again okay and getting feedback on six but he is not moving releasing pretty much all tension. He's still not moving. Something strange there. Let's go back to the beginning. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, six is, six is where the action is. There's just something. There we go. Got something out of six. Back to one, two, three, four, five, six back to one and that opened us up okay wow what a tricky little lock from jess certainly took me more than a few minutes to get into so jess i understand this is one of your early efforts that may be so but you did a great job on that so let's take this apart and see what's inside now to take this lock apart let's actually what we need to do is take the shackle Turn it backwards and down to that little line you see. And after that, we need to turn the key in the opposite direction. 
Unfortunately, you can't do that while this pin is in place. So what we have to do is knock the pin into the, into the padlock body. And then after we do that, we should be able to disassemble or get the shackle out. And then we can start the disassembly process. Okay. Okay, we got that pin in. Now we should be able to, yep, remove the shackle. Let's get the tray over here. And next order of business is removing two Allen screws. After we do this, the entire bottom of the lock should drop out into our hand. Okay, now we have that big spring I was telling you about. We have the, the lock itself, our screws, and that pin that we knocked into the body. Now, let me make a couple of notes here. The first one is that these are the the pawls, I guess, that go into the shackle and hold it shut. If we hold it up like this, you can see that is how it looks in the lock. And it's this nylon piece right here that keeps it from turning. That nylon piece is directly connected to the core. However, I do not like using plastic in locks. And my thought on defeating this lock is that if we heat this up enough to melt or soften this nylon, you could just go down with a shim and turn this piece and open the lock. In addition, I'm not entirely sure what this lock body is made out of, but it looks to me like it might be cast zinc. If that is the case, it certainly would be susceptible to melting down. But we are not here to critique the padlock. We are here to see what is in this really well done challenge lock. So let's get this back piece off. Now we need a key and the follower. Okay, start dumping these key pins out. Standard in one, homemade serrated in two, homemade spooled in three, homemade spooled in four, standard in five, and it looks like a single serration on number six. Let's get these arranged and then we will get all the driver pins out. Okay, on the drivers. Number one is a serrated T-pin. Okay, looks like our springs are different. Number two has a single serration. Let's try to dump these springs out one by one. Might need to use my little spring hook because that guy's not coming out. Seems like this lock is pretty gummed up on the inside. Okay, number three has a single serration in it. And again, a spring that's a little shy coming out. Okay, looks like a a T-pin with a deep serration in it. And here's the spring. Let's get the final two out from the back. Number six, a spool with some T-pin like narrowing on the bottom. Okay, and number five. Looks like a, 
a spool with some serrations in it. And another shy spring. Very small, looks like a cut down spring. So very little tension on number five at all. And let's get a flashlight and see if we can see any sort of threading in the core, in the Bible, I mean. And I don't see anything. Nope, doesn't look like any threading there. Though we certainly have some in the core that I'll show you right now. Okay, so here are our pins. Let's start looking at the key pins first. Number one and five are standard. Number two has some homemade serrations in it. Same for three, four, and six. Then moving up to the driver pins, we have a serrated T-pin in slot one, a single serration in two and three, a T-pin with serrations on four, Looks like a spool with some serrations on the belly of the spool in number five, and a spool with a little T-pin narrowing on the bottom in number six. We have a few different springs. Looks like one, three, four, and six are the same. Then we have a different, slightly lighter spring in slot two, and a cut down spring in slot five, which gives us very little tension. Then moving over to this core, Looks like we have a, a construction key ball right there. Let's see if we can, that might just be stuck in there with grease, probably just left over. Okay, we have four chambers that are threaded, number one, two, three, and six. I'm sorry, two, three, four, and six, and then one and five are unchanged. And nothing else noteworthy about that core. So, Jess. Excellent job putting this lock together. It certainly gave me a little bit of trouble. It took me a few minutes to get into. Part of the challenge was this spring that was pressing down on the core and giving me some dampened feedback on the core. So I don't know if that was your plan in putting it in this Lagarde padlock or you just wanted to send me a really cool and interesting lock body, but it certainly made things a little bit more difficult. Okay, that's all I've got. Jess, thanks again. To everyone else, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.